Good evening, uh, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Good evening to those uh, that are watching me on uh, Facebook Live right now. As I promised uh, to say, I'll be live and I'll be sharing a message uh, called um, uh, Position Yourself. I know you are welcome to this uh, live broadcast of uh, tonight. And um, I would like to share a very sensitive message uh, to each and every one of us uh, tonight on this uh, live broadcast. And um, invite your friends and uh, different friends that you would like to uh, them to be blessed about uh, the, by this message. Um, the, I'm Pastor Derek Daka. Um, from Fresh Aroma Embassy Church, and then also I'm a founder of Shining Zambia, and then also presenter and producer of the Big Picture on Life TV. Right, I welcome you to this broadcast tonight because the Lord has put something on my heart to share with you tonight, and I would like to share it with you here. And I want you to share this uh, broadcast because it's uh, so important that uh, we share the word of uh, the Lord. Thank you very much, uh, woman of God, Lady Mwakoi. And uh, also thank you very much to those that are coming right now. Right, right, um, the message that the Lord has put on my heart tonight is uh, positioning ourselves. And uh, when you are talking about positioning yourself, which means there is a position that you uh, really want to assume. There is a position that you really want want to sit in for there is a position that you want to place yourself positioning which means you aim for a settlement you aim for a placement that is positioning yourself and uh, my preamble of this message begins with a quote that each and every one of us should put in our mind is to say not everyone wants to hear your story but someone wants to feel sorry for the weary so not everyone wants to hear your story not everyone wants to hear Hear your cry not everyone wants to feel the way you are feeling not everyone wants to come through and understand what you're going through because there are people who never uh, you know uh, aim to hear the side of your story because they are those people in life and uh, not everyone wants to hear your story and but not everyone also uh, w uh, but, but everyone wants to feel sorry for the way so um, there are people that will never want to hear your story. But what they want to say to you is just, I'm sorry, my dear, I went through this situation. There are situations that you've gone through in life, and I would like to tell you to say, it's holy the Lord. There are people who come through and tell you to say, no, my brother, this accident, this problem, this sickness you're going through, I also went through the same uh, sickness. And at the end of the day, it's about you positioning yourself. And one of the questions that you need to ask yourself as young, people is success is success um, a position in life or is success uh, you know um just something that someone can have and you need to know that uh, nothing mm -hmm. nothing comes you know uh, by, by by the way of you know um sympathy you never have success out of uh, sympathy people cannot sympathize with you and they make you successful people will only feel sorry for you because you are a weary and the bible talks about this you have to position yourself we need to position ourselves and how are we going to position ourselves one of the best things we have to do is to have christ in our lives christ brings uh, you know responsibility for possibilities and also he brings capability to those responsibilities you may be responsible but you are not ca capable of something there are parents that we, we you know we know this is a father thank you very much man of god uh, Paul Tembo um, MP Nankwe Nankwe and also thank you very much Martha Ngambi my sister and uh, also thank you very much to uh, Lady Makoi um, our lady uh, from Fresh Aroma Embassy Church and we continue with the message one thing that we need to know is that people who never want to hear your story but they will always want to feel sorry for whatever you are going through i was um, very sick and people really wanted to feel sorry for me but not to hear the story that this sickness is what and this is what the world today is corrupt with bad morals people want to hear your story people people want actually to feel sorry for that for that story but not to hear that story because they want to sympathize with you when you're crying and i've come to 
tell you to, to today as a prophet of God to say, you know, um, not everyone who stands next to you is a good association. Not everyone that stands with you is in, in a right position for you. For you to position yourself, you first of all need a post. In life, you need a post. You need to place yourself. There are people that you force yourself to. They, 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 they mean nothing to you because they are not your right posts. Abakuk says, I am on my post, Lord. I am waiting. So Abakuk was on his post waiting on the Lord. You have to be waiting for something. You have to be waiting for someone. You can't go to the station, to the fueling station without a car and you say i am waiting for the attendant to attend to me where is the car you don't have a car then that is madness and that is sin we're living in sin we are waiting for things that are known and not waiting for the things that are reality christ is reality christ is the spirit we are waiting for christ to come we are not waiting for the spirit of god to come the spirit of god was sent already by christ himself to us and that spirit when it came imparted each and every one of us so when you receive christ you are positioned for your success you are positioned for your progress but one thing also you need to know is you to find a job and have that money for you to buy a car you can't be praying every day sleeping at church and you are you 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 want to progress in life you need to do something you have to work up and do something position yourself young man find something to do in life so that you may have success success is not um you know uh biblical like you know you have you you you're just with the bible in church with a very you know us voice to say no the lord has given me this mandate the lord has said this success is about positioning yourself you need to know your purpose of living knowing your purpose of living is not about walking very humble like you are baptized in lemon juice hallelujah it's about you knowing that the lord has given me a purpose of living and that purpose for it to be fulfilled it's you walking in righteousness I want to hear you saying an amen by typing your comment there. And uh, thank you very much for joining me. Right. Stop looking for sympathy in the people. Stop Stop looking for sympathy in people. Run to God and He will push you. Right. So you have to run. Uh, you know, you have to run to God. Stop looking for sympathy in people. No, people are not doing this for me. No, people are not visiting me. No, people are not doing this. Let me tell you, when you are in the tomb, no one will visit you. No one will have access to that cup that you always cry about people to come through. You have to position yourself for the Lord. You have to position yourself for God. God himself to use you. You have to position yourself for the Lord himself to come for your life. There is nothing, um, you know, uh, nothing that is very hard for the Lord. There is something that you have to do for you, for God to come through to your life. You have to position yourself. Each and every time I like to say this, you can't position yourself if you are not prepared. You have to prepare your mind. We have to position ourselves in the Lord. And the Bible is talking about this. Setting ourselves in the right position of praise so that the Lord can deliver us. You have to, to sit yourself. You have to sit down. You know, when someone's saying, I want to settle, which means they, they, they want to have stability in each and everything that they are doing. You can't have a good life without having a mindset to settle. Those people that you see today, they are with this woman, tomorrow they are with this woman, they are not yet settled in their mindset. And that is corruption. When someone is corrupt, which means they are badly sinners, they are in sin. So even if you are in church and you are busy uh, moving, cohabiting, moving around with ladies, changing from this one, you go to this one, you are in sin, my dear, you just need to repent. You are in sin and you just need to accept Christ as your Lord and person savior you can't be in a position where you say no i am a child of god and at the same time having a corrupt mind of not wanting to settle my dear sister if this boy this man who has been with you for eight years and is always telling you to say god's time is the best not at all what the time is saying god's time is the best the time is mentioning is the best already at that time the day he met you someone cannot just lie to you and tell 
going to say, no, God's time is the best. When is he going to settle? That is not a pure spirit. And that is something that calls for deliverance. Don't entertain people who come to your life to corrupt your mind. Don't entertain people who come to give you bad morals. Don't entertain those people who brings gossip to your life. At the end of the day, you will not give account for your friends. You will give account to God for yourself. And you have to position yourself in the right position for the Lord himself. Because we are waiting. And the Bible says to say, we are living episodes read of all men. What we need, we are living in the episodes. So which means we are living in the end. The end has come. And the enemy is the enemy is really working on our lives. One is corrupting our morals through our friends. You have to position yourself not only with friends. You have to position yourself in a right manner. If you die today, your friends will remain. Your friends will come to your funeral. If you die today, your friends will come and even, uh, even use your words against your life. And let me tell you, once you are gone, you will not give account to anyone. You will give account to the Lord. And I want to hear you to say, position yourself for the Lord. Don't position yourself for people. Don't seek for sympathy. Sympathy kills. Those people who seek for sympathy, where are they today? Those people who, who call themselves, I am the one we are, yeah, yeah. where are they? Those people who call themselves, they, they are kings of this world. Where are they? We have the people like uh, Mobutu Seseko, Seseko from Congo Diara. Today, where is he? He called himself is someone that will live forever. We have a lot of kings we had the Mugabes, all, all of them, the Mandelas, they have gone today. Why? Because when you position yourself in the Lord, the Lord has your life. When you position yourself in the Lord, the Lord will take care of all your needs. And we have to look for the right company. You don't need to hang around with people that will, de will, will tarnish your life at the extent of even driving you away from the Lord. No, that is not a right company. And my message for today is positioning yourself. When we position your, ourselves in the right place, we'll be able to worship our Lord Messiah. We'll be able to worship our King of Kings. And when you, if you you have a Bible right now, I want you to read in uh, uh, Matthew 6, 9 to uh, 14, and you'll be able to understand that when you position yourself, the Lord will come through for you. And the Bible says, when you position yourself, and this same God who provide all my needs, woman of God, Pastor Leah, my sister and my sister-in-law, thank you very much me i am very radical about now because the lord has shown me a lot of things that are coming through and i want to deliver all these things because i know our time we do, we do not have ample time to serve the lord we do not have ample time to even spare the enemy because the spread now is rising and the world is ending because the bible says we are living episodes of red of omen and this is the time that the enemy enemy is coming in a ship form to come and defile the church. The enemy is coming in a ship form to come and distract our lives. And the Bible says, the Bible says in um, Second Chronicles 20, 14, uh, 20 verse 14 to 23, the Bible says, I know where you are and I know also where I, I also know where the enemy name is so the lord knows your position the bible says again the lord is looking at the son of man who is searching for him one you have to be his son god cannot look for someone who does not belong to him god god cannot look at someone who does not belong to his kingdom you have to belong to the lord zambia we belong to the lord that is why god is looking at us zambia we belong to the lord that is why god is looking at our families zambia we belong to the lord that is is why the Lord has brought prosperity to Zambia. We should not have the mindset where we sit down, we're looking at the enemy and seeking for sympathy. You go on social media, you start posting about your husband. Oh no, my husband today, I saw him with a girl. I saw him with this woman. My sister, go and bath, put your makeup, your husband will stay home. Don't start seeking for sympathy online to say, no, this is what is happening. I want to tell you the truth. You have to seek God on your 
your knees. It's not about seeking for sympathy. Each and everyone should know whatever you are going through. Let me tell you, I have a mandate to accomplish before I go. I have a mandate to accomplish before the enemy comes and knock on your door. The enemy will never come if you do not allow and give them access. The Bible says Jesus Christ is knocking at the door. The door that Christ is knocking is not knocking at any other door. It's your heart. When he's knocking at your heart, he's waiting for you to give him access. He's waiting for you to give him that access in your heart. And he says he wants to dine with you. So you have to position yourself for him to dine with you. I can't go for dinner with someone who is not ready for that dinner, which means I will spend my money in vain. And saving the Lord is not in vain because one day you will reap from that, 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 that you are doing in the Lord. And may the Lord bless you. The, the Bible says, I know where you are and I know, I also know where the enemy is, which means the, 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 the devil understands the power of the Lord. The devil knows how powerful your God is and that is how the devil always come to corrupt your mind. You have to run away from that bad company that comes to corrupt your mind only that bad company that comes to tell you you can't do it that company that tells you to say you cannot stand for the lord tonight i've come to prophesy to your life tonight i've come to speak to your life as a prophet i want you to know and understand that the lord himself says i will be with you as i was with moses you have to position yourself for you to be in a relationship with someone and the relationship of you and god that relationship takes a, uh, takes a righteousness. You can't position yourself. The Bible says, I know where you are, which means the Lord himself can move you from that direction and redirect you. When the Lord says, I know where you are and I know where the enemy is. And the Bible says, he taught David to say, pursue, overtake and recover, which means he knew the path of the enemy and he knew the path of David. That is why he was able to redirect David to say, go this way and you you will win you shall win and you take possession of everything if you have lost my your marriage my dear mm -hmm. sister i have come to tell you to say you need to redirect yourself to the lord so that the lord can give you that victory if you have Lost, uh, you, you, you've lost hope in your in your family. There is stagnation in your family. I have come to prophesy to your life uh, and tell you to say it's time to redirect ourselves to the Lord. And the Lord is going to make sure that we have the great glory in Him. My father, Apostle Manix, uh, tells me to say the greater glory does not come from sympathy, from sympathy of people, but the greater glory comes from the hands of the Lord. God himself, he will redirect you to greater glory. You do not have to seek for sympathy. Papas will always corrupt you. If you want to follow papas, you always be corrupt. Follow men of God who leads you in the house of the Lord. The Bible says we are living episodes read of all men and when we are living in episodes which means we are tempted to fall, we are tempted to be destroyed, we are tempted to be corrupt but it's not about that corruption of man that will draw you away it's about the Lord himself that will move with you. I want to encourage you this time around, position yourself for the battle. You cannot fight a battle where you are not positioned and the bible says again this is what you will not need to fight in this battle position yourself and stand still see the salvation of the lord who is with you you will not you don't need to involve yourselves in battles that your friend is in her own marriage and they are fighting with their husband and you also join that battle. My dear brother, my dear sister, there is no time for that. Huh? There is no time for sympathy. The world is ending. Christ is coming. We need the salvation for us to move and have him because the Bible says you will not go with uh, you know, the old praise team. You will not go with your papa. You will not go with your mama. You will not go Go with the supernatural powers that you declare. You will go alone and give account to the Lord. Position yourself for Christ is coming. Position yourself for Christ is 
bringing the, the, the judgment on your life because as you are going to be judged you remember what you didn't do for, 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 for the kingdom of the Lord. Man of God the Apostle, I love this man of God so much, Mr. Francis KBC. May the Lord bless you so much and also Princess Rachel and um, uh, Daisy uh, may the Lord bless you so much. And the Bible says you will not need to fight. You you do not need to stand. You do not need to fight in this battle. Position yourself, your, yourselves, and stand still. Imagine you position yourself, and the Bible tells you again to stand still, which means you have to sit, you settle, you have to position yourself, and you stand still for the Lord. See the salvation of the Lord who is with you. And the Bible says, it told Joshua to say, fear not. I am with you. What do you fear? Faith takes you to the Lord. Fear takes you to the enemy. And fear is the state of nervousness, not for men, but for children. You know, uh, when you are always afraid about problems, about things, uh, you'll never grow as a believer. You need to encounter some things that will revolutionize your mind and where you take a step a bold step, step of, of faith where you look at the enemy and say, you Goliath, you are a gen, you, 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 you are just someone who, who is not even ready for the battle. You are someone who is uncircumcised or someone that I can bring down at any time. That is what we need to do. That is what we need to stand on right now. Children of God, let me tell you, tell your neighbors, friends to say, pastor is online right now and is speaking to many lives. I will be prophesying very soon, but right about now, I want to share a message because as we give you the prophecy, we need to, first of all, build your life. We need to lay a foundation for your life. And the Bible says, you will not need to, to fight in this battle. Why are you fighting in that marriage? Why are you fighting that sister-in-law of yours? Why are you fighting that mother-in-law of yours? Leave the battle to the Lord because you have positioned yourself and you have made it clear to say the Lord is my shepherd the Lord is my fortress you do not need anything but what you need is the Lord himself to fight for you there are people who have rebelled against you there are people who have been talking against you what you don't you what, what you need is not their sympathy what you need is the love of God position yourself and the Lord will fight your battle there are people who promise you to say they will, you will see in 2020 if you are going to leave don't reply to them don't retaliate to them what you need to do is to stand and know that you are with the Lord because his salvation, his greater grace is with you. And I want you to assure me something. I want you to assure me that when you are receiving Christ, that is the end of you fighting back to the enemy. There was a time I experienced a lot of setbacks and that was it back uh, uh, home on the copper belt in Kitwe, uh, my hometown, where the enemy made sure that I fell in everything that I was doing and uh, this was uh, you know a setup that the enemy used different different people around me but I never gave up because I knew that I was not fighting that battle the Lord was fighting and I was standing still I was standing still because because the Lord was fighting that battle. Even last week when I was, uh, you know, I, I, I was sick, really sick, I collapsed and everything. But what I knew is that the Lord was fighting that battle for my life. And my brother, my sister, in the ministry where you are, you have, you have battles that have risen against you. Let me tell you, do not rise to fight any battle. The sword of the Lord is what is fighting that battle. The salvation of God is what which is fighting that battle. You will not lose anything in that battle. The Lord is fighting for you. Uh, Pastor Man of Fire, uh, uh, Joshua uh, Mwamba from the Copper Belt. Love you so much, uh, man of God. And also Pastor Emmanuel Chikala from America. We love you so much, man of God. And um, as I was saying, you know, when you are in a battle where you, 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 you involve yourself in a battle where the Lord is not in, 
you end up losing your life you end up losing your children you end up losing everything because you are fighting that battle but when the battle is being fought by the lord nothing will be a forcing matter the bible says position yourself position yourself stand still you have to be still so that the lord himself fight that battle don't involve yourself don't shake fear not for the lord is with you don't you don't have to fear because the Lord is with you. The enemy has been fighting your life. Where are the people that have been fighting you, that have been fighting your life, pushing you around? Because they understand that you are a powerful one. No one can attack a tail. No enemy can attack a tail. No no dog can bite, can bite the tail, the, the, their own tail. The enemy is always attacking the head. The enemy is always following the head. That is why they are fighting you because they fight the head. They're not fighting the tail. Even when the enemy attacked me, they attacked my head because they saw that when the head is infected, then everything is gone. Position yourself for the Lord because Christ is coming. Whatever that you are doing, the makeup that you are doing, that's your body. When you die, nothing will remain. No, no, your pictures will remain, but no one will remain with your body because it will be buried. So make sure that you don't care. You don't care much about what people say. Whatever people People say it's their own opinion. You will never change the opinion of a human being. A human being is just a human being. That's how they are. Actually, snakes now are more human beings than you know the actual the actual animals that we we we, we read in botanic. All right, we are moving on, and uh, this is my 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 third scripture, uh, Matthew eighteen verse 20, 20. For where two or three are gathered. Together in my name, I am there mm -hmm. in their midst. So, look at this. For where two or three are gathered in my name, the Bible is not talking about a billion of people. The Bible is not talking about the crowd. Christ himself pulled a crowd. But when, <laughs> I want to open up a revelation to especially men of God who are looking for their churches to be uh, plenty with uh, overflows and whatnot. I want to open these points to you men of God to say there is something. Oh, Enolat, I love you so much, my dear sister. Um this is a revelation that I want to open for the first time. Christ had 12 disciples and he left the 12. Among the 12, he picked a certain number of those disciples to go with them when he was going to pray. And then when he reached there, he left the disciples there. He went alone and then met with a different crowd, a different kind of people. And this is Moses and Elijah. And they formed Trinity there. So he left a crowd of 12 and picked from the 12 again a group, you know, a, a, a number that created again a crowd that he moved with. You have to separate yourself from a crowd. That crowd that makes you sin. That crowd that drives you away from the glory of God. You just have to separate yourself from there. Because that's not where you belong. You belong in the presence of God. The presence of God is not a presence of crowds. The presence of God, I'm not saying that your church should not be or packed. It's not about having a church that is packed. It's not about having a church that is full of people, but it's about having the Spirit of God. The Bible says, For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I'm there in their midst. Which means what we need, we do not need people to come and sing songs, jump out, jump, do this, play drums. What we need first of all is the presence of God. That is the essence of a Christian, a believer. What you need in you, in your midst, is the presence of God. He says, I'll be with you as I was Moses. Did Moses fail? No. Did Moses fall in... Uh, not at all. But Moses killed her because of the rebellion. He, he became rebellious because of the wrongs that we're doing. You, you can't even slap someone when they are touching you. You, you can't even stop someone when they are touching you because you have entertained sin. You have entertained sexual abilities. You have entertained immorality. That is how you can entertain everything. You can't even stop anyone. Ladies, 
those days when we're young when you touch a lady even just on a cheek ah my brother they 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 slap you receive you remember jesus more and all the people who fought right battles in the Bible because women were so hungry for immorality when someone touches them they would just do whatever just to protect themselves but today today yourself when you stand you mm -hmm. look at yourself and say no oh Actually, I'm looking for marriage. It's not about looking for marriage. It's about having Christ in your life. It's about having the right man in your life. Christ himself says, we are living. Not living uh, a life of... We're living the Christ-like life. Jesus Christ was touched by this woman. And he felt it. He felt it himself. He said, no. I feel someone has touched me. Hmm. My brother, you yourself with the spirit of spirit of robots and terrible, you are praying in tongues. And this when a lady that touches you, you start asking for WhatsApp number. You start asking for address. Who do you stay with? Because they have touched you. Because your body is connected to your sexual feelings, not connected to the spirit of God. We need to position ourselves to the Lord. We need to position ourselves to God. We are coming from families full of battles. Let's not seek for sympathy in our families. Even when you are sick, don't seek for sympathy from people. Hey, I'm sick. I'm looking for money. There are people who are waiting for my death. There are people who are waiting for me to beg from them. But none of them provided anything. The Lord himself provided through his own hands. I had the salvation of life. Through his own hand, I am living today and proclaiming the word of God. What I'm aiming to achieve now is not my name. I am, I am standing to bring the proclamation of the name of the Lord. To bring the proclamation of, of, the, proclamation of the name of Christ to be known further. I want to tell you something very critical. And this is one thing that I learned from um, one of the late men of God. He said it profoundly. We need to position ourselves in, a, in the right place for us to receive what which God is waiting for us to have. There is something that you need to do for you to move. It's not about having a crowd. That is when you are called a man of God. It's not about having, uh, you know, uh, uh, a TV channel for you to be called a powerful man of God. It's about having Ubuntu Akwalesa, having Umupashu Akwalesa. That is how you need to lead yourself as a man of God. It's not about having flats. It's not about having a big temple. But it's about having the spirit of God. My mother, Prophetess Mwaka, she tells me every time to say, My son, we are living episodes read of all men. So this is not episodes read of, you know, we have entertained sin. Oh, thank you very much, my mother. Um, I call her apostle because I love her ministry so much. Uh, Mama Gladys Paswani, love you so much. And also uh, Bishop uh, Billy uh, Mwanza, I love you so much. But this message I'm sharing right now, the Bible says uh, we have to position ourselves. Stand, position yourself, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you. You don't have to seek for sympathy from people. Each and everyone you see, no, I'm suffering, I'm struggling, there's this sickness in my family. You don't have to seek for sympathy from people. What you need is Christ in your life. All you need is Christ in your life. Position yourself in the body of Christ and let him use you as his temple. Your body is the temple of Christ. Your body is not a temple of bad things. You have opened the door to the enemy. The Bible says he's knocking at your heart, at the door. The door that Christ is knocking is not the door of your church. He's knocking to your heart. And he says, 
Where two or three are gathered in my name, I'm also in their midst. When you call him in truth and in the spirit, he will be in your midst. He will be with you as he was with Moses. And you have to be of good courage. The days that we are living in, we just need the good courage. Christ never needed a crowd for him to go and pray with the people. He even left the disciples that he trusted, the disciples that he was walking with. He left them for him to go and concentrate, for him to position himself for the greater glory, for the greater grace. What you need is to position yourself. Start, stop looking for, for sympathy and thoughts in people as if you are uh, a cousin to Jesus Christ who comes to judge everyone uh, on the day uh, whenever you meet with people. Stop judging people. Position yourself. John 4 verse 23 But the hour is coming and now when the true worshippers will worship the Father in truth and in spirit. Right. Here is the point and I'll be closing from him. And uh, but the hour, which means there was something that happened for it to become a context to the story. But the hour is coming, which means the hour has come and the hour is now. Where we are going to live, where we are going to live, not only... um. Not, not only to live by, you know, uh, this praise of the world, but living to worship the Lord in truth and in spirit. The Father himself in truth and in spirit. And I want to open this point so that you can understand me very well. If you're writing down, I want you to write down. Truth is a mental state, which means it's the mind itself. Truth is a mental state. You program your mind to say, this is a truth. I am saying this. And you shall know the truth and the, the truth will set you free. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. The truth shall set you free when you say it, when you speak it, not when you keep it and say, no, I know the truth. I will not say it. Even in court, when you know the truth, you are not saying it. No one will believe you. If, even if you say, Nangu they will have to say, let them write, let him write, let her write, because it's a truth that wants to be known. If you're a child of God and you're always in the corner waiting, saying, no, I know the truth. Time will come. The hour has come. Where worshippers? Let's not use this verse when we are in church, when this sister is from cohabiting, when this sister is from fornicating, and they come. Uh, the hour has come for, for, for the true worshippers. No, that all. Is that verse that you need to use yourself, my brother, my sister, to say the hour has come for the true worshippers us to worship the father in truth and in spirit first of all you need to worship him in truth before you go to the spirit you can't worship God in spirit and in truth. You worship him in truth, now in spirit. Which means you have to stop lying. You have to stop. You have to stop. You have to stop whatever that you've been doing for you to serve him in truth. And then you have to move now to, 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 to the spirit. That's a transgression that you need to do. That's a transgression. It's not about, you know, uh, putting on a suit and say, no, I have the power of God. I have the spirit of God is not the truth is a mental state you have to prepare your mind your mindset is prepared your mindset is ready for that truth your mindset is ready for for, for the truth thank you my daughter Twambo thank you very much my daughter thank you very much thank you uh, as you are following me right now I just want to sh I'm sharing this message because the Lord has put it on my heart to say I should share this message with his people and I'm urging you to say if you're following this broadcast you can share it with your friends you can share it with people around and also you can also like and also leave your comment if you want this uh, message that I'm preaching here I can still send it to you because I have typed it and I want this message to aid to help a lot of people the truth is a mental state it's a state that you have prepared yourself the truth is just like a room where you are sitting and there are four corners where you can look at this and that, but you are always finding yourself at the right things. The truth is something that liberates. The truth is something that can penetrate at any time. And no matter what, no matter... You know, lies can... I'm sorry, I'm using this. Um... um Lies can 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 go and return because you you lie you don't know this and that you 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 say you know whatever uh whatever you are doing 
I'm receiving a message. I'm uh, I'm responding at the same time and then also preaching. But I'm I'm really sorry. Uh, I will I will maintain my lane of not uh, uh, respond to messages. Message or uh, one person was sent me to say, man of God, this is a powerful message. How can I have a DVD? It, there's no DVD, and I'm not selling any CD uh, for, for for any message. Uh, if you want to get in touch with me, you can uh, send uh, to zero nine seven two ten eight five eighty eight. And if you want to watch me on your screens on TV, I am uh, um, on live for TV. Uh, one one two on top star, and also I'm also on my page, Pastor Derek Shine Daka. Right uh, as we continue with our teaching, we have only five minutes remaining, and uh, we'll be leaving this place. Go to the mental state. You have to prepare yourself. You are in a range of some, and this is not a myth. You have to know. You you need to discover to say there's nowhere where we're going because uh, the Bible says you shall know the truth, and this truth will set you free. So the freedom that you need is a true freedom. Zambia, we are free. Twaripoko wuntungwa, which means we are free. We have that freedom, which is a true, a true freedom. Freedom financially, freedom mentally, uh, maritally, academically, each and everything is free because freedom is true. F uh, truth is freedom. When you say the truth, you'll be free. You'll be moving freely. You'll be singing songs freely. But when you lie, you are bound to that lie because you have to protect it and water it every day. You have to put different lies. Now, if you run out of ideas to lie, then you are you are good to go so we need to look for christ we need to make sure that we live in him we need to make sure that we have christ in our lives so that we may move forward in life and now we go to the second point is the spirit the spirit is a spiritual state this is where the business is the spirit is a spiritual state where you have to prepare your mindset there are, there are so many things that you have to do um for you to, to to move with christ you can't be with christ and say no i am a spirit man and at the same time you're doing different things you have to know that the the the, 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 the spirit is a spiritual state no matter what no matter what dress code i've seen people today judging like they are cousins to jesus judging like they are the ones who even ordering the book of judgment for god no that will stop judging people by their outlook by their actions you don't know when they go to repent and ask god for his mercy remember david went and slept with somebody's wife and later on god called him man after my heart how many people knew that david went to ask for, for for forgiveness from god stop misleading people and asking god for apology god is not man that you can ask for apology god is god that you go and ask him for forgiveness you understand it that's a revelation don't ask God, for uh, you know, you start moving around. No, oh, you no, and I can't so and I just so you have just to go yourself to God and ask Him for forgiveness. Stop asking God for apology. God is not your friend, God is not your cousin, God is not your neighbor for you to be asking God, no, Father, I'm asking for apology. God is not your in law, God is your father. Where you go and ask for forgiveness, and He will forgive you. He says He will forgive all your trespasses as you have you forgiven others. You've been keeping things from 1992 you've been keeping morris forgive people that have wronged you they have nothing to do with your your life uh, your christian life they have nothing to do with your life as you are moving on forgive them and the lord will bless you abundantly immensely as he said i will forgive your trespasses why are you keeping people in, in your heart as if you are a bank as if you are bank of zambia keeping people in your heart Stop keeping people in your heart. Release them. Let them go because they are creatures of God. You never created any human being. Someone has wronged you. Forgive them and move on. Life is about moving on. If you die today, do you think that you'll be buried with those people that you've not forgiven? You go alone and get rot alone and you go to hell alone. No one. No one will die on your behalf. You have to know that this is the right time to forgive those people that you've been holding. How many people did you know that they will die today or tomorrow? Nobody. What you need to know is you to move with God. You to have to forgive each and everyone that you've been holding in your life. Positioning yourself. You can't position yourself with a lot of luggage. You can't sit in a bus with a lot of luggage. You have to position yourself in the right place. When you are positioning yourself, which means you put yourself in the right corner. 
spiritual state a spiritual state a spiritual man a spiritual being needs to understand that this is not me but it's god living in me that's what the bible says you don't have to no this is rico this is rico this is namulungu as if god told you that he will be just with you alone god is with everyone according to how they call them even those that you call no if he end they are with god because according to themselves they know how they live with him how do you know that god is with uh, everyone are you are you god's uh, god's assistance uh, assistant god does not need any assistant what god god just need is children god is not looking for papas if you are a papa and you think like god is looking for papas let me tell you go back and make yourself a child and god will use you that is what god is looking for uh, my, my brother gives you go more and let me tell you god is not looking for people who want to walk like they are baptized in lemon juice holy musa rababa speaking in tongues every time god is looking for those people that you are saying they are imperfect because god wants to help work on their mental on their spiritual state god is not looking at their uh, their mental state god is looking at their spiritual state the people you see them walking and you're like no these ones are sinners mm-hmm. are you god's are, are you god's assistant are you god's uh, god's uh, town clerk God is not looking for clerks in, in, in his kingdom. God is looking for those people who will take other people in his kingdom. God does not God is not looking for anyone to open uh, the, the, the court. Uh, 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 let me speak to you today. I have I feel, uh, you know, there is a revolution that we need to take as Christians, as children of God. God is not looking at, uh, you know, everyone as a papa. God is not looking at everyone as a prophet. God is, God is, is full of prophets. Remember, Christ himself was God a prophet David uh, I mean um, this man again this man uh, Moses was called a prophet when he came to visit Christ and this also if you didn't know Moses was also a prophet and also this other guy Elijah was also uh, a prophet they came and they met with Christ they surrounded him that was not a crowd those people who surrounded Christ they brought him a challenge to say hey my Jesus, this time around remember me I crossed with uh, the people uh, the red See, I crossed with a, a group of people, and mind you, the people who were moving with Moses, not like everyone was in good books with him. Some of them were even laughing at how uh, Moses used to uh, mamanya. <laughs> but God did what God crossed with him. Gizimo, uh, Gizimo, stop looking at the thoughts that people are finding in you, just look look at god how god is using you your talent has impacted so many people in the community your life has impacted so many people uh, in the community why don't you go back and tell god to say the same talent this is what i'll use I, I, i'll use to bring people in the kingdom you've impacted so many people in the society with the same talent where you are working in a corner but now look at where you are today god has brightened your life because of that same talent is that talent from the devil there's no talent that comes from the devil at all if making a computer was coming uh, was a talent from the devil we are going to reject it why are we using social media if it's from the devil <laughs> people are playing with your mind if your mind is corrupt you will never succeed i lived in kanyama I lived in Kamala South. I lived in Kawata. I lived in a prisons area there. And the time came where I spoke to myself. I said, this is the right time for me to move. This mm-hmm. is the right time for me to make an impact even to my family. Today, where am I? Today, God has impacted many people through my life, through my talent. I, 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 I almost died. I almost lost my, uh, lost my life. But what happened? The Lord said, this one has made that impact and I will not leave him like that. I am one of the best journalists, one of the best presenters in the country of Zambia. If there are 10, I'm among the three. If there are two, I'm the one. And then the next one, I don't know. That is how I have that boldness as a believer. You as a child, you do not, you don't have time. Do you know where God stays? I'm asking you a question. Do you know where God stays? Each and everyone, you are judging people. No, this is what what do they have? Do you think you have God? Do you think it's just yourself? God is not looking. 
looking for, for, for commanders. God is looking for his own children. God is looking for his children. So if you are listening in, to me uh, in Bemba, Les Talefo Avan, Les Talefo Avastata, Les Les Satalefa, you know, Avantova Kalamba, Les Salefo Avana, Avanava, no, no, because the Bible says, Lekena, no, no, Vese Kurin. So God is looking at Mwana Mutonto, God is looking at small children, God is not looking at papas with big mansions and whatever, God is looking for children. So even you who feels like Mwai Tuntumba, no, you are very big, you, you can't stand in front of people, God is looking at you as a child. Because the Bible says he's looking at the son of man who is searching for him. He's just looking at the son of man. Son of man. Which means there's no papa of man. God is looking at the son of man. So even in you, Lukum, God is looking at you as a son of man, as a child to him. God is looking and not looking at you at, at anything that you're doing, but God is looking at you as a child. Let us mm. go back to God in truth and in spirit. Let us not look at God and say, no, God is looking at me because I am very talented. God is waiting for your spiritual state to be matured. Why we are judging ourselves as Christians? Why we, we, we want to believe in supernatural powers? No, bring back my ring because we are we, we've grown big. We have forgotten about our state. To God, each and everyone, you are just a child. You are you have nothing. You are still um, a child to him. And the Bible says in spirit and in truth. So them uh, to a term that term spirit reads in uh, in John three verse eight. I want you to understand this, and this is a Greek word, spirito, spirito. It's a Greek word, and. Um, speaks of a worship that is not locally or physically based. The term truth was used in the Greek uh, world to speak of a mental concept. So the Greek, they spoke about a mental concept because it's a spirit and the, the background was the faithfulness of God in the tremendous and trustworthy, mm -hmm. you know, where God himself looks at his uh, own spirit, the spirit itself, which is above everything. Christ sent the spirit and this spirit came, imparted them. Have you ever imparted people with your spirit? Whenever you are in the presence of people, this, this is the Namuzimu, we have the spirit of God. Who told you? Are you a container of that spirit? The Bible says you are the temple, not a container. You are a temple, which means you contain the spirit of God. And if another person sits next to you and they believe in God, which means they carry the same God. Do you think you can share glory with God? You will die. Ask Nebuchadnezzar how they threw, they threw him out of that kingdom because he thought he was, uh, he was carrying even the power of God. You cannot position yourself if you are not prepared. My brothers, my sisters, I want to encourage you to say, this is the time that you have to position yourself. You will die tomorrow. They will bury you. They will eat Shima on your behalf and you you will not even know where you will go so what you need to do now is to receive christ even if you are in church you are a pastor a papa full of shoes you just need the not the power no too much power what you need is to run back to him and make your your, your path right with him because your your spiritual state has been corrupt the only thing that the enemy can attack is not your house it's not your job the enemy always starts with the mind when the mind is corrupt when the mind is defeated then everything is gone everything is called sour everything is good to go you have to prepare yourself to fight each and every battle. You have to prepare your mind for you to stand. And not everyone wants to hear your story, but someone wants to feel sorry because you are a weary, because you are always worried. So someone wants to feel sorry for that. Not everyone is seeking for sympathy. When you die, people will just cry. No, he was a good man. He was a good woman. He was a good man. He was a good man. And at the end of the day, each and everything will be forgotten by that. Even the power, the messages that you preached about power will go. The rings that you told people have power will go. How many prophets have we, have we lost? How many great men of God have we lost? And we, we've not changed. We are still called uh, papas. What we need is the transgression, transformation of the spirit. 
we have to be transformed in our minds we are always thinking about no god 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 that what you need it's nothing else but having the truth in your life let's stop using lies spreading lies falsehood every time you are a child of god you are not a child of the devil if you are a child of god and you call yourself actually now in church that is where you can find sin uh, being entertained covered in church that's where you find sin is being entertained like no man's business why because we want to cover our sins you can't cover sin you can't help god god is someone whom you can't even help god is not like you who can sleep and wake up beaten so i am encouraging you to say is the lord is yahweh and the bible says i know where you are i also know where are your enemies is omnipotent omniscient so god knows where you are and also he knows where your enemies are the battles that you've been fighting god knows god knows them the bible says i'll go before you i'll be with you as i was with moses no one can go where you've you know a driver is taking you to kitwe he's never been to kitwe he will be looking on the road trying to find you know a signpost for him to 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 know that i'm in kitwe i'm in dola nevertheless a driver who is driving you to an unknown destination is not a trusted driver but the lord is the driver of our souls and his spirit is assured to us so what we need is the spirit of god nothing else your gifts and the bible says the gifts of the lord are without repentance so people who sin people who go and fornicate people who go and do adultery at the end of the day they will come and perform miracles sing and do what and no one is dying and you feel like the world is just at the same level no my brother don't lie to yourself jesus christ is coming Christ is coming and what we need is to go back to him. Let's rededicate ourselves to him. The Bible says, for where two or three gather are gathered together. The Bible says, where two or three are gathered together, which means they are united. Today we are gathering without having the unity. Today we are gathering without being united. But I want to tell you to say you need to be united even as a church. Where's the church today? We are failing to unite ourselves. We are failing to unite our lives. Why? Because there are so many things that we have believed in. We need to unite ourselves as a church. We need to unite ourselves as a country. Zambia, where are we going? We want to listen to different voices. A mindset that is corrupt listens to everything. You are fit for, for, of everything. But what we need to do is now to gather as one. We gather as one together. Together in my name. I am also there. Not in the name of your papa. Not in the name of your mama. Not in the name of uh, that, uh, no, my prophet, my what, my, my commander, my what. In the name of the Lord, when we gather, it's also there. Zambia, let's gather for the Lord and not for people. Stop looking for sympathy in people. Just run to the Lord. If David wanted to become a king, he was going to kill the, uh, this man. Uh, so, before his time, and there were replication that were going to happen, but he waited for the right time. You should wait for a right time. Stop fighting people in their marriages for you to take over. You fail to give birth. Stop fighting people when they're on their positions. You fail to handle the pressure. Each and every level brings different attractions. Each and every level in life brings different attractions.
you attract battles you attract different things and what you need to know is because of the level of life that you have and when you have god he'll fight for you how many people have questions oh pastor you we saw the pictures we saw what and what and we we thought many people were even asking look at my eye look where it was swollen and everything yeah it was done the laser operation was done but i'm okay i'm fine i'm fine i want to work for the lord i don't want to work for man i don't want to work for man i don't want to do anything for man at the moment i serve as a journalist as a technician one of the biggest uh, technician that zambia has ever had and the world at large but one thing i believe in is to serve god in truth and in spirit why are you putting people under cover to say no they they don't have god which god do you have the bible says the hour is coming and it's now where the true worshippers who are going to worship God in truth and in spirit. The spirit is a spiritual state. It's not this brain. It's where your spirit is prepared to meet with the Lord, having an encounter with Yahweh, having an encounter with the Lord, having an encounter with the King. The king is waiting to feed from your worship and your praise. But you spend all your time not positioned. Look for your position. Your position is not to become Maibusa, Randebosata. Your position is not to become Elder, Rekatosata. Your position is not to become uh, the chairman of construction in church. Your position is to have Christ and move with him in truth and in spirit. And how do you maintain your position is through righteousness. How do you have the position is to inquire from the spirit, which means you have to get Christ in inside you, the inside. Stop looking for positions in church. Position yourself in Christ. Stop looking for positions in the community. Look for Christ first. But you need to work. Huh? You don't have to be sleeping. I'm ending my message for tonight. And I want you to understand that the Lord is with us. And I want to pray with each and everyone. Each and everyone that is watching me. I just want you to leave your, 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 your message. If you have any request, just leave it. I'll pray for you. I know what the Lord is doing in your life. Father, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak in the lives of your children right now. Father, I pray that whatever that I am facing right now, whatever stagnation that is faced mm -hmm. in their families, right now is being destroyed in Jesus' name. Yahweh, I pray as your servant, liberation is taking place in each and everyone's family right now. Each and everyone who is facing stagnation, problems that they cannot comprehend, right now I speak as a prophet. Let all the things that they are facing be destroyed in Jesus' name. Chains that are holding their marriages, their careers, their, their things to over, their businesses, their jobs to over, I break in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray. Your children to overload, whatever that they are being faced with. Father, if they are being faced to overload with fear to, to over Father, follow their dreams. I speak as you said to David, best you overtake and recover. If they have lost their marriages right now, I speak recovery in Jesus' name. If they have lost hope to overload in their businesses, I speak recovery in Jesus' name. Father, I pray as your servant. Even those that have caught hisses right now, I speak under the sound of my voice. I speak to overload. The yoke is broken. The yoke is broken. I speak change in their lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you very much for watching this video. Tomorrow again, same time, I'll continue with my teaching. 
I will continue with this message. Position yourself. God bless you. And this is going to be a series of my preachings because I want people to understand that positioning yourself for the right thing, it's one thing that you cannot miss with God. You have to position yourself for what which belongs to you. If you don't position yourself, people will take your position. You have to position yourself in the spirit and in truth which means you have to make sure that you are well positioned my dear sister in that marriage that you're in if you don't position yourself people will take charge of that marriage you have to position yourself spiritually my wife had to make sure that she stands with me when i was in trouble when i was in that hospital bed when i had that operation my wife had to stand for me because she understood that when you position yourself the Bible says I will be with you as always uh, uh, be of good courage you have to position yourself you do not need people you do not need judges the world is full of judges everyone is judging each and every one each and each and every we are judging us because of our wrongs but what we need is to position ourselves and take part in the kingdom position yourself for the Lord to use, not to position yourself for something that you do not understand. You cannot feed of what you don't know. You cannot feed of what you don't understand. You, you have to feed mm -hmm. of what which the Lord knows himself that mm -hmm. is feeding you. Mm -hmm. I want to encourage you this time to say, when you position yourself as Zambia, in Africa we position as we say, Zambia we are not remaining behind. Zambia we are not dying from the gases. The Lord himself will come through. If Dr. Nevis Mumba positioned himself and said, Zambia shall be saved. Even today there are those women and men who rise and say, Zambia will not be taken for granted. Your marriage will not be taken for granted. Your career will not be taken for granted. My brother, my sister, you need to rise this time around and not beg because the Bible says, and this same God will provide my needs. When the Lord is providing for you, no one will come and shake their heads because you are not seeking for sympathy from anyone. The Bible says, is with you as he was with Moses. The Lord bless you. Thank you very much and good evening.